All right, YouTube, it's Shadow King, King Nazri, and I'm here to review episode 9 of She-Hulk, the finale. You... <laughs> this episode... This episode was... It was awful. I mean, the, all the other episodes were bad. Including the, the Daredevil one, which was its least bad episode, but it was still bad. But this. This was truly horrendous. It, this really showed that the, that the writers were not only talentless, that they were not only ignorant of the source material of the comics, and of the character of She-Hulk and everyone around her, but it really showed that they are lazy and don't care. Not even... Not about the MCU, not even about their own work as professionals. And it's not made even better. It's not made better by them going in interviews and saying, uh, well, we made this episode to, uh, as a, <laughs> as a middle finger to the fans who criticized our show. Oh, and... Oh, we're just so clever with how we made our how we made our commentary, uh, and you just know Tatiana Masolani or whatever her name was, the woman who who plays uh, Jennifer Walters in She Hulk, uh, just backing her up, and just along with Jamila Jamil, who who plays fake Titania, because uh, that's not the Titania from the comics. Uh, she's just saying, oh yeah, this is. Yeah, she's just uh, insulting the fans on social media, too. And when they try to criticize her, uh, she'll just act like the most juvenile child and just make these ignorant, immature responses. And when they say that her show sucks, it's just nothing like the characters. She says, who cares? I got to be in a Marvel project, and I got paid. See, this is the kind of Marvel we're dealing with now. The Marvel where it's, they don't care about the product. They don't care about the universe, the characters. It's just a brand name to uh, get clout and potentially launch them into a different uh, a different product in their career. But with this episode this bad, unless you got the biggest shills of all time, which considering the MCU uh, fanboys, the Marvel Knights, uh, that wouldn't be all that much of a stretch, but even then, it's going to be a hard-fought battle. Chances are, your career is, somebody's career is going to be done. Hopefully, it's going to be most, if not all of you. But let's get into this episode, shall we? We start off with them doing a parody reference of the 1970s Incredible Hulk show. You know, the one with uh, Bill Bixby, rest, God rest his soul, and... Lou Ferrigno, uh, playing Bruce Banner, though they called him David Banner. It, it's it's a little, it's this whole other thing. Let's not get into it. They called him David Banner instead of calling him Bruce Banner. And Lou Ferrigno was the Hulk, and he would also voice the Hulk in the in the '90s animated series, and would play the Incredible Hulk in the uh, 2008 movie. Uh, yeah, they make a reference to that, but yeah, this. Yeah, but it's all a dream sequence. Honestly, this show is so poorly written, it doesn't even deserve to reference something good like uh, the Incredible Hulk 1970 series. And it's also kind of a shame that uh, that Hulk's reputation has gone down now, because uh, before before the MCU, Hulk was rather well-known and respected character. He's still well-known, but he's not well-respected. The 1970s Hulk show really did put respect on the, Hulk, on the characters. That's mostly because of Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno's portrayal of the character. Um, 2008 Hulk, which I think was pretty good and it's underrated, but uh, the audience didn't take well of that. And then you have the old Mark Ruffalo thing, uh, which I think Mark Ruffalo is highly overrated, and he does, he's not as good as Edward Norton and Lou Ferrigno did with the character. But let's move on, shall we? So yeah, it was just a whole dream sequence, and... Uh, Jennifer is inside the cell that they kept the abomination in. 
So Disney couldn't afford a new set, couldn't afford a whole bunch of other set pieces to serve as different jails. Um, let me remind you that Disney, despite losing some money with their uh, bad movies and shows and other question questionable decisions, they still have over a billion dollars. A multi billion dollar it's a multi billion dollar company. So they can afford to do new sets. It's just that they got lazy. Uh but yeah, um they put in the cell. Uh Jennifer complains that oh this isn't her fault. She just got angry uh that the intelligentsia uh exposed her personal information and made her look bad in front of her co-workers, the public, and her, even her family, and said that any, this could have happened to anyone, and anyone would have gotten angry. And Brooke, you know, Brooke, that lawyer, that black lawyer, that at first she, she seemed like a decent character because she was holding Jen accountable and wasn't a, afraid to call her, to basically more or less say she's an idiot and incompetent. But then ultimately... And then, but as the episodes kept, as the episode went on, and in later episodes, she's basically just kissing her own, I mean, kissing uh, She Hulk's butt, and uh, last episode she made this, uh, she went out, had a mini rant about the wage gap because uh, the female lore of the year war was basically a participation trophy, trophy literally. Yeah, her. She's basically saying that uh, you're not just any person; you're a Hulk, and you you went out, you got out of control, and caused a huge rampage, and that's what the people see. And this just points out that She Hulk is just a massive hypocrite and incredibly arrogant because her cousin, the Hulk, even when he was cuck, even when he was cuck Hulk, because he's because he's not Professor Hulk like in the comics, but Cuck Hulk tried to tell you this multiple times, you need to learn to control your anger, you need to practice control your anger, because even the slightest outrage could cause massive mayhem and get people hurt, if not killed. And she almost did kill someone in the last episode, it wasn't for uh, the uh, special ops team putting pointing guns at her. Uh, but no, Jen knew better, but except, except she didn't. The same way she doesn't know better about being a lawyer. Because she sucks at her job. But, uh, Brooks uh, says that they're willing... I think Brooke was the one that said that, that they're willing to let her go uh, as long as she puts on a power inhibitor. Remember the power inhibitor that Bruce said that was a prototype and he wasn't able to uh, reproduce that? Except in later episodes they have power inhibitors. For, it, for like the abomination and other characters, which makes, which just kind of makes Bruce look like an idiot. But then again, I wouldn't. Ex I, I guess it, uh, there's only two options for why, why that would happen. Either that, either the writers were forgot what they wrote and were too lazy to fix it, or they just took another opportunity to make a man look stupid because they're a bunch of woke, bitter feminists. Um, and we we see that She Hulk uh, gets basically loses her job and her house. Um, I mean it's not it's not surprising that she lost her job because she can't be the She Hulk anymore. That was a requirement of her job. She was she's basically a diversity hire, and because she can't afford afford her house, she has she lost it and is back with living with her parents. Yes, that's why I said parents, mother and father, despite the fact that her mom in the comics is supposed to be dead, but we've already proven that the writers don't care about the comics. And uh, she's basically uh, compl she's complaining about how her life's falling apart and how they're taking She-Walk away from her, even though she, she didn't want to be She-Hulk, she just and she's already gotten the power and everything. She just wanted to be a regular lawyer, which, I mean, technically she can be, but it's going to be difficult because, you know, she caused a rampage. 
So, uh, her plan is to basically uh, find and stop uh, Intelligentsia, who in the comics were a collective of the soup of Marvel's smartest supervillains. Like I've already said, like members like the leader, Modoc, Red Ghost, Mad Thinker, Mr. Sinister, Dr. Doom, Doc, the Dr. Doom. And in this, and in the MCU, they basically just turn them into internet trolls. They don't have any of the villains. It's just a bunch of random end cells. And they're basically just a character, character, I mean, a caricature that the writers can use uh, to voice out the criticisms and make them look like straw men and gaslight so that the, the all the MCU fanboys will say, oh, this must be what the, all the haters think. Oh, they don't look so stupid and ridiculous. And let's not take, let's not listen to them. <laughs> this show is awesome. <laughs> yeah, because we train because the MCU has basically trained their fans to be a bunch of seals and just clap. Arf, 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 arf. Yeah, and, be, and basically just applaud everything that Marvel does. Have no uh, critical thinking, no time to do actual analysis and realize that the MCU is falling apart and criticizing it and holding Marvel accountable, along with Disney. And what was that again? Uh, oh, right. Uh, they're trying to find the intelligence. Here. And she uh, she recruits the help of a Latina best friend. Uh, I still don't know, I still don't know her name, and they might have said it, but she's such a not she's such a one dimensional character. She doesn't even have her own goals and own arc. That she all her her entire existence practically revolves around Jen. That I'm not even gonna bother looking up what her name was, and also the uh, the cut uh, male lawyer uh, who uh, asked for their shoes. Yeah, she's calling in her favor for that for the help, and it's their basically their plan is to infiltrate the, in the intelligentsia, and they do this by uh, <coughs> sharing a video of Jennifer back when she was in college. Where she was twerking and spanking her own butt. I didn't know. I didn't know we had twerking coined back then, but you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, but basically, <coughs> basically they they they're using this because they think that uh, they think that uh, the intelligence and and by extension men and crit. And the critics of the show and the MCU are a bunch of loser idiots. <sighs> and we also, uh, Jen was also going, and Jen said was also getting stressed out by uh, by this one during the investigation, and decided to uh, uh, take a mental break from this whole situation. Yeah, very. Very lazy millennial Zoomer of you up to that she hope you're giving millennials and Zoomers a bad name. Uh, and she goes, uh, hangs out with Emil Blonsky, the abomination, at his, uh, you know, new age hippie Buddhist retreat. And she also meets Wrecker from the Wrecking Crew, who they've turned... They've turned into a soy cut beta male, and he's no longer a villain anymore. Then again, he wasn't much of a villain to begin with, despite the fact that he's part of the Wrecking Crew. And the Wrecking Crew was one of the most notorious villains in Marvel because they've uh, they're powerhouses and have fought pretty much every superhero you could think of. Uh, but no, no, he's done, he's out and done before he even got to be. be a, a proper record. Oh, yeah, and I also mentioned that they race swapped uh, record because he's Latino instead of you know being white. And they also race swapped Thunderball, who was supposed to, was black in the comics, but is now white in the uh, in the She Hulk show. Yeah, great job, Disney. Tokenism. 
Uh, and Jen just continues to be a complete idiot because she still doesn't ask why did Rector tr uh, try to siphon her, siphon her blood? What was, the, what was the end game of that? No pun intended. And that's going to make her look even more stupid because that's her blood is the key part in this story. Or at least for as long as it lasts. You'll see. Um, but they do manage to... <coughs> they do manage to uh, infiltrate the fake intelligentsia. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really wish this was a fake intelligentsia and that the leader and the other supervillains were just using this as a scapegoat for their own, for an actual plan that's actually can be taken seriously. But knowing these writers, they'll probably, they probably fly through. It'll probably be like another Iron Man 3 situation uh, where they where they realize they messed up and they're, they're going to try to course correct, except like they did with Shang-Chi, except they didn't do the, the correction. They just kind of gave us another... Another crappy version of a character and called it Mandarin. So odds are I don't trust Marvel to do Marvel to uh, do the intelligentsia properly. But yeah, um, they have uh, the soy lawyer, the soy male lawyer, uh, act act like he's good being a recruited for the for the intelligentsia. Uh, and some of the characters, like, some of the characters um, who were in the previous episode were, are, are in it and they act like they know this guy despite the fact that they've never met before. Or they said they're big fans, so a uh, big fans of the Soy Lawyer. I, mean, I don't know what the writers are doing. I mean, it just, I mean, oh yeah, they also, there was also this one bit where... Uh, the uh, misogynist char character lawyer, uh, I forgot what his name was, I think, uh, Dennis, yeah, yeah, I think that's what they said it was. Yeah, he also uh, w went on went on the news and dumped on, on She-Hulk, and uh, apparently they've had sex with, they've had sex in the past. Um, yeah, if you hate this character, if you hate this lady, maybe don't bring up that you had a sex life with her. I mean, I mean, you're not accomplishing anything by saying she's a whore. I mean, we already know she's a whore. Uh, but I'm surprised you're not bragging about having having sex with Megan the mayor. Uh, and then again, that was just merely a shit pun uh, as guardian elf shapeshifter pretending to be Megan the mayor. But back to the the plot, the the intelligentsia is just making having this whole speech about how she hulk sucks she didn't earn her powers it's just the straw man of all the critics uh on social media and the writers think they're so so clever not real not realizing some of these uh criticisms don't actually work because uh they either a actually are true about she hulk and that just really shows how poorly written the uh the character is in this show or B, they've strawmanned the argument and didn't actually pay attention to the details and listen to the criticisms and ticked in the heart. <sighs> and then the abomination shows up in his abomination form, breaking his parole. Why is he here for a rally uh, that is anti she hulk does he even know this is an anti-She-Hulk rally? Uh, I mean, who knows? He's just there to give his you no know, new age, new age speech. He's just every typical, typical uh, feel good, uh, improve your life speech you hear from these nonsense new agers. <sighs> help me, help me, Jesus, help me. This, this show's infuriating. So, yeah, it looks like Abomination's ref, ref, uh, being reformed is legit. Because why would we want the Abomination, who's consistently a villain in the comics, to remain a villain and do cool things like fight the Hulk or fight She-Hulk? 
Hulk. Then again, this show pretty much has proven consistently that they don't know how to do cool action scenes, except for the Daredevil set sequence, which didn't even involve She-Hulk. So the chances are they would have met, they would have ruined the fight between uh, Hulk and Abomination, or or She-Hulk versus Abomination, or whatever. Uh, but Jen, uh, Jen and crew. Uh, uh, confirmed abomination that he's broke his parole, and also find out that the leader Todd, who was one of She Hulk's date, was Cult King, and the leader of in, and the leader of in, this of Intelligentsia, which people predicted weeks ago. So this is not clever. This was about as clever as the Rings of Power, uh, revealing that Halbrand was Sauron, despite the fact that. The uh, people watching Rings of Power, which is nothing like how Tolkien uh, wrote the books and the lore, they figured that out weeks ago. So, yeah, you're not doing anything impressive, writers. And, yeah, so Todd uses his power, I mean, uh, injects himself with She-Hulk's blood and hulks out and Man, the CGI was bad. This makes the 2003 CGI model of Hulk from Ang Lee's Hulk look good. It is that sad. 19 years worth of technological advancement in CGI. Billions of dollars at, at their disposal. A $225 million budget. And this is the best they can do. Pathetic. So that's going on. Uh, Titania pops out out of nowhere. Uh, where did she come from? What is she doing here? Uh, and the intelligence is fights Titania, despite the fact that Titania is hates She-Hulk. So you figure they'd be working together. And then uh, Hulk up appears and. I mean, despite the fact that he was uh, in outer space, uh, possibly even going back to Sakaar to tease World War Hulk, despite the fact that they've already ruined any chance of doing World War Hulk by doing Thor Ragnarok and incorporating that into the story and ruining that, but I've already talked about that. And Hulk fights the Abomination. Doesn't even bother to ask what, why is Blonsky the Abomination again? This is breaking his bro. It's, it's the one reason why... That's one of the reasons why I hated the Disney era Marvel animated universe. Because the heroes acted like a bunch of hotheads. Uh, and don't ask, don't take the time to talk and discuss things and just start fighting. And, and it feels incredibly contrived and not organic. Now, granted, this is, this is different because it would be against heroes versus heroes, which felt stupid. You just want to get on with the story and have the characters not act like idiots. In this situation, it's a, it's a hero versus a villain, but the villain hasn't, as far as you know, hasn't done anything wrong yet. Uh, and then we, then we get to the worst part of this whole finale. No, 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 no. One of the worst parts. It just got really bad. And that's saying something. So, she, Jennifer is seeing all this and is saying this doesn't make sense. And, and fourth wall breaking, which by extension means the writers know this. All this doesn't make sense. Hey, writers, just because you say this doesn't make sense, or you're acknowledging it doesn't make sense, doesn't mean it doesn't make sense. It doesn't mean that your writing is good, because you're not doing anything to fix it properly, and you're just showing how lazy and care how lazy and spiteful you are. So, uh, She-Hulk, I mean, Jen turns, takes off the power inhibitor and turns into She-Hulk and literally breaks out of the Disney app, very similar to how she would break out of the comics in the John, uh, John Byrne and, uh, Chris Claremont run of She-Hulk and, and tried, it was going to confront Marvel Studios about this whole, about this finale and all the, the MCU stands were 
Oh, saying, oh, this is so clever. Anyone criticizing it just doesn't get it. It's just like it was in the comics. And they'll even, they'll even pull a panel of that, of that part in the comics in, on Twitter, not realizing that there's different context. Whereas the comics, this was written well, and it was actually funny, whereas this is written poorly, and it's just puerile and asinine and insufferable. But yeah, uh, She-Hulk comes into the real world and goes to the Marvel Studios, confronts the writers. Yeah, yeah, the writers basically put themselves in. The most surprising part was that there was actually male writers. Like, I saw like two of them. I was genuinely surprised. I thought this was like an all-female writers. And again, man, maybe it's just an all-feminist soy lawyer. I mean, all soy uh, writing team. And it's basically just saying, oh, we were, oh, we were this, we were supposed, we were uh, told to do this. If this is how th sort of things done. But uh, She Hulk says, oh, let's not do it the standard standard way. Let's do some. Let's write our show our own way. And they said that Kevin wouldn't like that. And she said she's gonna talk to Karen. I uh, talk to Kevin. So yes, She Hulk has gone from an insufferable, hypocritical. Uh, feminist, SJW, to a borderline Mary Sue, and and uh throughout the show, and has turned into what is basically a Karen. I'm genuinely surprised that she Hulk didn't just scream. I want to speak with your manager. <sighs> but, but yeah, this was basically just there as a segment to feed the the writer's own ego by having themselves inserted into the show. But, but it seems kind of pointless because She-Hulk isn't the character she is from the comics. She's basically just a self-insert for the writers to uh, vent out their own frustrations and bitterness. And really just shows how, what a bunch of horrible people they are. And how empty and meaningless their their lives truly are. Because they have no more morals. Um, they're, they're, uh, they're too arrogant and corrupt. But yeah. Uh, so she hope meets Kevin. But it's not Kevin Feige, the... Uh, Overseer of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and also, a, also I think he's the current CEO of of Marvel Comics. But no, it's a <coughs> it's a robot with the anagram Kevin, and he said that he's in charge of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, right. Is you're so clever. Bravo. And <laughs> she basically uh, says that she didn't like this finale. She wants to change it. She doesn't want, want the typical Marvel structure where it actually has a plot. They want to have this show that have no plot, even though the show already barely had a plot. Because nothing of significance, for the most part, has happened. Most of it has been filler. And, and but Kevin tries to argue that they're trying to set things up for future films. They say, like, no, 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 just save that for the save that for the movie. I don't care if this this ending feels rushed and nothing of significance happens. So Kevin just ultimately caves into her demands, and they even have this one bit where uh, they said that where they teased uh, a She Hulk movie, and Jane gets excited for that, only for Kevin to say, no, that's not happening. And yeah, and then we come back into the in, inside the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and everything has been resolved off screen. Uh, Todd's been Todd's been taken care of and is going off to jail. Uh, Abomination is <laughs> is signing a form, uh, but it's going to be, I mean, to take responsibility, 
but it's also going to say so that he broke his parole and he's going to be get, going to be in prison for another 10 years so let me get this straight the abomination the super villain has more integrity and is willing to take responsibility for his for his misdeeds while she hulk the hero is willing to warp reality itself Oh, to act like a complete Karen, Aaron, and avoid any repercussions for her actions. Wow, Jessica Gow, you really did write a great character, I said sarcastically. Uh, yeah, and also Daredevil shows up. Uh, how did... Why is Daredevil here? Shouldn't he, shouldn't he be heading back to New York? Nope. No, no, no explanation. And she, uh, She-Hulk takes uh, Daredevil to meet his, I mean, to meet her family, and basically they try to, you know, it's that old awkward conversation when the boyfriend meets the parents. Oh man, you could, you could do better. And then. Then it happens. Hulk arrives and he tells his family to meet his son, Scar. For those of you who are not familiar with the comics, Scar appeared at the tail end of the world of the well acclaimed World War Hulk storyline written by Greg Pak who also wrote Planet Hulk, and his story was that he, because Hulk, because the Illuminati uh, planted a reactor on the on the ship that took Hulk to Sakaar, because they felt he was too dangerous to keep on Earth, they were going to keep him on a, on a peaceful planet, but that didn't turn out well. But yeah, that ship exploded and destroyed, destroyed Sakaar and Hulk's wife, who was pregnant with Scar, and his uh, brother Hiro Hirokawa, and Scar uh, grew grew up on the restored Sakar, and he felt abandoned by his father and grew resentful. And he went to hunt. He was hunting down his father on Earth. They had had multiple grudge matches, and he was a huge part of the. Fall of Hulk storyline, which which was where the intelligence was introduced, and also Red Hulk and Red She Hulk, who were both uh, Thunderbolt Ross and Betty Ross respectively. Uh, and ultimately, it, the story ended with um, with Scar realizing that that Hulk didn't mean to abandon him. He was trying to avenge his uh, avenge his family and himself. And he he ultimately forgive. I mean, Hulk and Scar uh, reconcile, and he's and it starts a whole war, and it starts a whole World War Hulk storyline where Hulk has his whole family, uh, Hulk, his son Scar, his cousin She Hulk, his uh, daughter Lyra. He, he had a daughter with a diff with a different woman, uh, not not Kyra. It was a uh, Thadara. Just ignore the ringing. Uh, uh, Thundara, uh, gave birth to, gave birth to, uh, his daughter, Lyra, and she was part of the war, of the, uh, of the Hulk team, and, uh, Red She-Hulk was in it, and along with, uh, A-Bomb, who was his friend, his best friend, Rick Jones, not to be confused with the Abomination, who's Emil Blonsky, yeah, he got turned into a Hulk-like, to an Abomination-like creature called A-Bomb, and also Korg was in it. Yeah, because because I've said before, Korg is a Hulk is a Hulk character, not a Thor character. But bottom line, Scar was a huge important character, a well written character, and was a huge part of Hulk's story that should have been dealt that should be given the time to breathe and fleshed out properly. And the writers just dropped him out of nowhere without any of the build up, without any of the context that justifies his existence. This is just as bad as when uh, Batman v Superman 
tried to do the death and return of Superman storyline uh, without all the context and story that need to do it. Wow. Unbelievable. Jessica Dow, you were the one who wrote this episode. And in one episode, you made this show worse than uh, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, WandaVision, uh, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, uh, Batwoman, Naomi. Some of the, these are some of the I, I say I even hate this more than Raimi Man too. I, I even hate I even hate She Hulk more than I hate Raimi Man. And I do not say that lightly because you guys know how much I hate Ra the Raimi Man trilogy. But oh, it's just so this this is really frustrating for me to go through because not only because I know this story because I was actually there when that story was going on and I read that read that those comic lines follow those were some of the best folk storylines we've had since the Peter David run and to see that such a great story got squandered not once but twice the first time was by Taika Waititi that overrated Thor Ragnarok movie uh, but now they're doing it again they just brought one of the most important characters in Hulk's story out of nowhere. Like it was no big deal. Or, or like it not that big of a deal. And this is why I really, really hate this episode. Because it showed... I already knew that the writers didn't read the comics. Or had a, the bare bones knowledge about the comics. And they don't care about these characters. But seeing this, this it not only shows that the writers don't care, it shows that Marvel doesn't care. Not Kevin Feige, not any of the people working at Marvel care. And if they don't care, why should I care? Why should I care about this show? Why should I care about the MCU? Why should I care about Marvel in general if you don't have enough self-respect for your own product to provide the best material for the audience so they will support you. So yeah, that happened. And we also get this segment where uh, She-Hulk says that she's gonna uh, be serving just as both her, both as her, uh, as Jan and as She-Hulk and hold people like T uh, Todd accountable for their actions. Despite the fact that you literally warped reality to avoid your repercussions. But then again, we've already established that She-Hulk is a massive hypocrite. Uh, so, so it's the typical rules for thee, but not for me mentality. Oh, and also Wong uh, breaks Abomination out of prison and takes him to... Uh, takes him to the... Takes him to his lair where he can spend the rest of his days in peace or whatever. And that's and that's the end of the end of the season. Hopefully the end of the series. I mean going through this this really this really really hurt. Not only because it was bad, not only because the writers don't care about the fans or are willing to insult them, but it, it really showed me that Marvel in general does not care about Marvel, the, co the comic universe. If they can dis if they can go around changing these characters beyond recognition and make them unlikable, and s continually insult the fans that are trying to criticize and make the make the product better, and just uh, call them the worst things imaginable. Um, <laughs> Calling them racist, sexist, homophobes, uh, and every other insult under the sun. And just ensure. And just show how completely lazy they are with these. Lazy are in terms of action and storytelling. And uh, other 
aspects of filmmaking, and they don't. They're doing a terrible job in the cons and watching their sales burn, yet continue to go in this direction. I mean, just knowing all of that, how can I continue to support Marvel? The answer is, I can't. After this, I'm done. I am done with Marvel. Not just with the MCU. Not just with the shows. The comics everything. I am no longer a Marvel fan. Uh, all you people who are wondering if I'm going to be playing uh, Marvel's Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5, that's not happening. I mean, it wasn't going to happen because apparently the the people uh, at Insomniac are pro-choice and I'm pro-life and a, and a Christian, so I mean, that didn't sit well with me, but despite that, I'm not going to be playing that game. That's just another reason I'm not going to be playing that game. I'm not going to be playing the Wolverine game. I'm not going to be watching Wakanda Forever. I'm not going to be watching any upcoming MCU uh, movies or shows. I'm not going to be reading any more Marvel comics. I'm not going to be watching any Marvel shows. Marvel is dead to me. And before anyone calls me a DC uh, fanboy now, I want... I gave good reviews to Marvel sh to Marvel uh, content back when they actually cared. Back, sh back when they actually had a soul before they sold it to Disney and to the woke culture. But, that, but those days are gone. And so am I. So, run hell, run hell, Marvel. Stanley, I am so sorry that. These people have ruined your ba your baby. Well, that's all I have to say about this awful, awful season finale, this awful show, and just Marvel in general. I'll catch you mortals later. Just, I hate this.